Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for July 21st, 2011. Here is the latest news in the global automotive industry. While the media has focused on the UAW's plan to try and organize one of the foreign transplants operating in the United States, AutoLine Daily has learned the union strategy includes going after automotive suppliers. Specifically, the union is going to target suppliers who already have UAW representation in some of their plants, but now it wants to get all of their plants organized. In an upcoming episode of AutoLine, Cindy Estrada, the UAW vice president in charge of suppliers, says the union is still formulating its strategy, but it is soon going to announce a national campaign targeting key suppliers. The union has partial representation at companies like JCI, Lear, Magna, and Metaldine. Estrada says workers at supplier companies are increasingly interested in the union. One thing is we're getting more calls than normal from suppliers, from workers. And part of it is, is because suppliers caught, you know, they're driven down to such a low cost um, that workers are literally walking out the door making $10, $11 an hour and being eligible for, for food stamps and for subsidies in the state. The union has launched a couple of campaigns over the last decade to organize suppliers, but with limited results. Even so, Estrada is the first UAW vice president with organizing experience to sit on the union's executive board. And now the union is devoting more money and resources to organizing. And a good sign for the entire NAFTA region, sales and production in Mexico posted big gains last month. According to Wards, production was up nearly 15% to just over 245,000 units. Passenger car sales jumped over 21%, while light-duty truck sales saw just a 3% gain. The Detroit 3 automakers all posted big sales gains. However, Asian automakers, with the exception of Nissan, struggled. Honda and Toyota both saw sales and production declines, but it's also interesting to note that Alfa Romeo entered the Mexican market for the first time last month with three models. Sure looks like Alfa is sticking its toes in the Mexican market before moving north into the U.S. Now to Europe. Opel just introduced an all-new version of its compact van, the Combo. It's offered as a passenger or as a panel version. And the panel version comes in two different wheelbases with two different roof heights. Under the hood, the combo comes with a choice of six engines, four diesel, one gas, and a natural gas version. Five and six speed manual transmissions are available along with stop-start technology. If any of this sounds familiar, it should. The Opel Combo is a redesigned version of Fiat's Doblo. Now for some Toyota news. Bloomberg reports the Japanese giant estimates it will sell at least 16,000 plug-in Priuses, sorry, Priy, in the U.S. next year. The car launches in early 2012 and features a lithium-ion battery pack that should deliver an electric-only range of 13 miles. Once that power is depleted, it functions just like a regular Prius. The big T is also wooing Tesla. It just gave the California-based EV maker $100 million as part of a three-year powertrain deal. Tesla will provide Toyota with lithium-ion batteries and electric motors for use in the all-new RAV4 EV, which goes into production next year. You know, Tesla might still prove me wrong. A couple of years back, I thought Tesla would be joining Studebaker and Oldsmobile in the automotive graveyard. But the company might just have a future, especially if it can convince more big OEMs that it is a one-stop shop for advanced batteries and electric motors. Two wheels or four, few things are as satisfying as winding out a really powerful vehicle. Fast is fun, but it can also be terrifying, especially if you're breaking a land speed record. 
Auto blog reports a guy named Bill Warner hit nearly 312 miles an hour on a motorcycle. Is this guy nuts or what? Making the feat all the more amazing, his modified Suzuki Hayabusa has an open cockpit. No aerodynamic bubble canopy protected him from the roaring wind. According to Warner, the most challenging part of his record-breaking run was not the speed, but the stopping. He had to really fight the machine to bring it to a halt before the runway ended. He said the bike was jumping all over the place. And man, that is scary. Would you believe that the speakers for your audio system in your next car could be paper thin? I didn't believe it until I heard it. And that is coming up next. What if we always settled for the first thing that came along? Then we'd never have gotten here. Introducing the Sonata Hybrid from Hyundai. In Taiwan, the Industrial Technology Research Institute is working on all kinds of really cool technology. Recently, I was invited to visit eTree's laboratories, and here are three new technologies I saw there that are directly related to the auto industry. I'm in a showroom at iTree. That's the Industrial Technology Research Institute in Taiwan. They're showing me all different kinds of technology that they've got here. I want to show you this one. This is what they call a paper speaker. It's flexible. It's as thin as paper. And get this. Use it. Coming right out of this thin paper. Now imagine putting this in the headliner of a car or in the, in the door panels of a car, especially with an electric vehicle. Not only is the packaging really good, it's very lightweight. As you know, a speaker can be very heavy. They're showing me all different kinds of technology, including what they call e-paper. It's a very flexible membrane here that allows you to download any kind of information that you can present visually and Here's another example of it, very flexible, very thin, and when you run a current through it, you can change all different kinds of graphics, and as soon as you stop the power, it freezes on whatever kind of display that you want. Again, very interesting, that could have great automotive applications for different kinds of displays. They're showing me all different kinds of technology that they've got here, including a torque wrench with a digital readout. They tell me that this can be 100 times more precise than a mechanical version, mechanical readout, which allows you not just to work on heavy duty kinds of things like car engines, but also use this on precision machinery. Just a very interesting application of how digitization is even coming into hand tools. By the way, the newest models from LuxGen, a Taiwanese startup car company, are going to incorporate those paper speakers. So this technology is already migrating out of the laboratory. Hey, I gotta tell you, I am really looking forward to tonight's AutoLine After Hours. We'll have Tom Crum, author of What is Good for General Motors, in to talk about his ideas of doing away with the moving assembly line. He proposes a new way of making cars, and I think he's really on to something. Learn all about it tonight, so join me and the Auto Extremist, Peter DeLorenzo, for the best insider discussion in the industry. And that's today's report. Thank you for your attention, and please join us again tomorrow.